Hello and welcome to Mischief Managed. My name is Saffron Foxclaw and I'm one of the admins here. And today I will be showing you how to use the Potions HUD. You may notice I will be using our beta HUD as at the point of recording, the official HUD has yet to be released. However, there is no difference between the beta HUD and the official HUD. If you have yet to set your Mischief Managed HUD up, pause this video and do that using the video link below to guide you. The first step will be making sure that your skill points are assigned into your potions skill. After that, you may attach your spell journal. And some of you may notice that it's been updated and looks completely different. So this is my skills tab. It's not entirely accurate as I'm using the beta HUD, so my potions points are a lot higher than they usually are. But as you can see, all of my points have been allocated. As you can see, our spell journal has been completely updated with a new design, which includes a potions tab for all your learned potions, as well as a reducio and a pack button, which minimizes it. And the pack button will take it back into your inventory. When you're ready, you need to make sure you purchase your potions textbooks. You can find the list of potion textbooks linked below. These can be purchased at Flourish and Blots in Diagon Alley, Tomes and Scrolls in Hogsmeade, or the Beehive Stores in Godric's Hollow. You also need to purchase a cauldron, as this will be your potions HUD. This can be done at Potage's Potions in Diagon Alley, the Second Hand Shop in Diagon Alley, Goods Potions in Hogsmeade, or Snitches Get Stitches in Hogsmeade. And you also need your ingredients, which can be found in many different locations. Slug and Jiggers Apothecary in Diagon Alley, Dogweed and Deathcap in Hogsmeade, Goods Potions in Hogsmeade, The Magical Neep in Hogsmeade, Cobb and Webs in Nocturne Alley, The Beehive Stores in Godric's Hollow, and they can be found in the wild, which is what we're going to do next. As you can see, we have moved on to Godric's Hollow. Whilst purchasing ingredients is easy and nothing new, the ability to harvest your ingredients in the wild is a new addition to Mischief Managed. Link below is the approved plants list and the approved creatures list. Around one third of the ingredients can be found in the wild and we've added hints as to where they can be found and in what season on the Mischief Managed wiki page. Today we're going to find a nice and simple ingredient to show how the system works and we're going to pick some daisies. Once you have found your wild ingredient, you will need to select either herbology or magical creatures on your HUD and roll to identify it. Most of the ingredients will light up when you have identified them, though be aware that some may not. So we're going to select herbology. We're going to identify I have attempted to identify a daisy and I have succeeded. So next I'm going to click on the plant here. And then once I've clicked on it, I'm going to roll to care, which allows me to pick it. And as you can see, I have received one unit of daisy roots. You will now see that they have gone into my inventory. You will also notice that some ingredients may have higher identify levels than care levels, but don't worry. If your skill is not high enough to identify an ingredient, don't despair. Someone with a higher skill level, such as a professor or a friend, can identify it for you so that you can then roll to harvest it. Now let's move on to brewing. For this demonstration, we are going to be brewing rat tonic. The first step is to check that we have this recipe. Recipes like spells and transfigurations are learned from books that can be found or purchased around the sim. Rat tonic is found in healing potions for the home. And we do have that recipe here. 
Checking the recipe on the Mischief Managed Wikipedia approved potions page, we need to find all the ingredients available. As mentioned earlier, ingredients can be bought or found around the sim. For rat tonic, we will need two burdock roots, five drops of essence of chamomile, two measures of standard ingredient, and one cup of standard potioning water. Standard potioning water is part of the HUD, it does not need to be purchased, and it can be retrieved from the Alembic. However, the rest will obviously have to be found or purchased. Now, first, we are going to res our cauldron. So as you can see, it is here. I'm going to click on it and I res it and it will attach. This is the HUD. It has several different tools and actions which are as followed. You will click on your cauldron to stir either clockwise or anti-clockwise at varying speeds, to cover it and to uncover it, to add items slowly, fast or normally, and to scourgeify. You can select the burner below for heat levels of low, medium, high or off. Your ingredient box here has all of your ingredients in it. You then have your cutting board here, which you can cut, chop or press your ingredients. You have your pestle and mortar to mash, grind, muddle or crush your ingredients. This is your alembic, which is where your standard potioning water is obtained. And this is your hourglass where you can brew. You click this any time you are required to leave your potion on heat, leave it simmering or brew for X amount of time. You will insert the amount of time you wish to brew for in minutes and the hourglass will set the timer. And this bottle is to bottle your potions, which is the final step which ends the brewing process. You can either make the HUD bigger or smaller, dependent on your screen size. You can minimize it and it becomes this little circle like your spell book. You can take it back into your inventory or you can take it back into your second life inventory by pressing X. As you can see, we're going to just re-add that. Earlier on, we picked some daisy roots. So I'm going to minimize my potions HUD open up my inventory and click on my daisy roots and then I can res them, give them, trade them or trash them as usual. So I'm going to res it and it's going to give me the option to take it back into my inventory or transfer it to my potions HUD. So I'm going to transfer. Now that we're familiarised with the potions HUD, let's move on to brewing. We'll need to roll for rat tonic and you'll do that as you roll for anything, spells, transfigurations, etc. We're going to click on potions and we're going to type in rat tonic. And I am now brewing rat tonic. Click your ingredient box and we'll select the first part of the recipe. So we need to grind the standard ingredient to a powder and add it to the cauldron. So we click the ingredient box to obtain the standard ingredient and select the amount. And in this case, it's two. Then you click the mortar and select grind. Next, we'll click the cauldron and choose add. Since the recipe doesn't specify, we'll just add it instead of adding it fast or slow. Next, we need to add the water to the cauldron. We'll click the alembic and select water and then we select one cup. Again, we click the cauldron and select add. The next step is to heat on high for three minutes. We'll click the burner and select heat high. Then click the hourglass and input three minutes. All potions are brewed in real time, so you'll actually have to wait for three minutes in the event that you want to work on another potion whilst you wait, you'll have to have another cauldron. You should also detach your potions HUD if you will be casting spells, otherwise any spell you cast will be cast on your potion. If you start a brew timer and need to log off, your HUD will remain in the state where you left off. The brew timer, if set before you log off, will advance even if you are online or detach the HUD. 
For the purpose of this video, we're going to speed up the process. Now that it's done brewing, we'll add the chamomile to the cauldron. Click the ingredient box, select essence of chamomile, five drops. Click the cauldron, add. Next, we'll stir anti-clockwise seven times. So, click the cauldron and select stir anti-clockwise seven times. Since it doesn't specify, we'll only choose stir anti-clockwise instead of stir anti-clockwise fast or stir anti-clockwise slow. Sometimes you'll see this in a recipe as stir counterclockwise. This should still be considered stir AC or stir anti-clockwise and seven. Now we need to chop one burdock root and add to the cauldron. Click the ingredient box, select burdock root one, click on the cutting board, select chop, click the cauldron and add. Reduce the heat to medium for seven minutes. So again, we're going to click the burner, reduce it to medium, and then we're going to click the hourglass and we want this done for seven minutes. Again, for the purpose of this video, we're going to speed up the process. We're going to chop one burdock root again and add to the cauldron. So as you can see, I clicked the ingredient box, I selected burdock root, I clicked the cutting board and selected chop. Following that, I clicked the cauldron and selected add. Now I'm going to stir seven times clockwise. One and seven stirs clockwise. Allow to heat for one minute until red in color. We can't actually look into our cauldron to see the colour, so we'll just have to trust our guts. Click the hourglass and input one minute. Again, for the purpose of this video, we're going to speed up the process. Now the final step is to click the bottle and bottle our potion. The HUD will ask you if you're ready to bottle. We're going to select yes. The HUD should tell you the quality of the potion you've brewed or if you failed. And look, I have brewed an excellent rat tonic. Apart from failure, you can create three different types of potions, poor, good or excellent. Now you can take your cauldron back into your inventory by clicking the two triangles. It will ask you to confirm you want to take it into your inventory. Select take. Your potion should now be found in your HUD inventory, here. You can click it now. Doing so should give you a few options. You can give it to somebody, you can trade it with somebody, you can res it or you can trash it. Resing it should give you a prompt. It will tell you what the potion is as well as to warn you not to right click and detach it. Doing so will destroy your potion and it will be lost forever, all that time wasted. Instead, you should click it and select take when you're finished. This prompt will also tell you how many uses are left in the bottle. Different potions have different amounts of uses. You can either drink or spill the potion after resin. Both will use up one portion of the potion. Spilling it can be useful when items require you to use the potions on them. You can also drink them. Drinking a potion will put a text above your head, which displays what potion you are under the effect of. This text will last for as long as the potion's effects will. In the event that you're leaving Sim and you want to be rid of the effect, you can find it under temporary attachments. If you log off, however, the potion effect will vanish. If you would still be under the effect of a potion, please role play accordingly and you may change your regular HUD titler. And that's everything you need to know about the potions HUD. 
all of the important links are below. And we will also be producing an FAQ for any questions or concerns. And you can also ask within the Discord channel, HUD questions. We just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for every single member of Mischief Manage and beyond Mischief Manage who have supported the creation of this HUD. And we really, really hope you enjoy it.